In modern warfare, the power to see, listen, and understand the electromagnetic spectrum often determines who acts first and who prevails. Australia has entered this domain decisively with the introduction of its new MC-55A Peregrine Electronic Warfare and Intelligence Aircraft, a capability that transforms the Royal Australian Air Force from a force merely responding to threats into one that can perceive and influence events across the vast Indo-Pacific. Behind this seemingly technical upgrade lies a deeper shift in Australian strategy, from defensive territory to strategic deterrence through information superiority. The MC-55A represents a fusion of technology, intelligence, and alliance cooperation that redefines what deterrence means for a middle power facing growing uncertainty in its region. The Peregrine Program, officially known as Project Air 555, is being developed in partnership with L3 Harris Technologies and the United States Department of Defense. Four aircraft based on the Gulf Stream G550 business jet are being converted into high-end electronic warfare and signals intelligence platforms. They are scheduled to enter service progressively from late 2025, following an upgrade known as Baseline 2, approved earlier this year under a foreign military sales arrangement worth approximately 404 million United States dollars. The relatively compact airframe belies its power. The MC-55A carries a suite of sensors that can detect locate and analyze enemy radar and communications emissions in real time. These capabilities give Australia an unprecedented ability to monitor activity across thousands of kilometers of ocean and airspace, from the northern approaches to the South China Sea. For a country whose defense depends on early warning and rapid coordination with allies, this is a transformational step. The aircraft can link its data directly into the RAAF's command and control networks, sharing signals intelligence with the Australian Defence Force and partner systems such as the United States Air Force's RC-135 Rivet Joint and the Royal Air Force's Air Seeker. The Peregrine can identify hostile radar signatures, map electronic order of battle, and even cue other platforms, such as PAA Poseidon Maritime Patrol aircraft or F-35A fighters, to respond with precision. In a region where the People's Liberation Army, Navy, and Air Force have expanded their presence dramatically, the ability to sense and classify emissions from over the horizon is both a deterrent and an insurance policy. Technically, the MC-55A sits between the massive American rivet joint and the smaller regional surveillance platforms used by Asian Air Forces. Unlike the United States, Australia does not require a global fleet. Instead, it needs persistent regional coverage integrated with its allies. Compared with the Chinese Y-9JB and Y-9DZ electronic intelligence variants, the Peregrine offers higher endurance, better sensor fusion, and far superior interoperability. The system can operate independently or as part of a networked reconnaissance grid with satellites, surface ships, and submarines. In the Indo-Pacific, where electronic signatures are as valuable as kinetic strikes, the ability to fuse data from air, sea, and space domains represents a qualitative leap forward. Strategically, the Peregrine gives Australia something it has long lacked, the ability to perceive the gray zone environment that lies between peace and open conflict. 
Over the last decade, Chinese Coast Guard and maritime militia vessels have frequently tested regional responses with ambiguous, deniable actions. Detecting such moves early requires not only radar, but also deep signals intelligence to understand communications and command links. By integrating the Peregrine with its PAA Poseidon fleet and ground-based analysis centers, Australia can now identify and track patterns of activity that were previously invisible. This strengthens the credibility of deterrence, because it reduces the chance of surprise and allows decision-makers to respond proportionally before escalation occurs. The MC-55A's impact extends beyond intelligence gathering. It enhances electronic support for strike missions, contributes to electronic attack planning, and underpins the RIRAF's evolving doctrine of long-range strike and denial. As Australia invests billions of dollars in guided weapons and explosive ordnance manufacturing, the ability to assign and verify targets with precision will depend on the data the Peregrine collects. It effectively becomes the nervous system of the ADF's future kill chain, where information moves seamlessly from detection to decision to delivery. In exercises with allies, these aircraft will form the invisible connective tissue linking American, Japanese, and British forces under the AUKUS and Quad frameworks. However, such sophistication comes with challenges. Each aircraft costs hundreds of millions of dollars and relies heavily on American technology and support infrastructure. Maintenance and software updates require tight coordination with L3 Harris in the United States, and the sensitive nature of electronic intelligence raises complex issues about data sovereignty and sharing. Australia must also train a new generation of electronic warfare officers and analysts capable of interpreting vast streams of digital signals. Industrial participation remains limited, meaning that true sovereignty over this capability will take years to achieve. For now, the Peregrine is both a symbol of Australia's advanced partnerships and a reminder of its dependence on them. The regional implications are significant. As China accelerates its electronic warfare and anti-access programs, including ground-based jammers and airborne electronic intelligence assets, Australia's new capability signals that it will not be blind to the electromagnetic domain. The MC-55A's range allows it to operate well beyond the first island chain, observing activity in areas critical to Australia's sea lines of communication. Its presence reinforces the broader shift in Canberra's defense posture toward active participation in regional intelligence networks and forward deterrence rather than purely continental defense. For Beijing, the message is clear. Australia now possesses the means to see further, react faster, and contribute more meaningfully to allied situational awareness. Looking ahead, the Peregrine is likely to serve as the foundation for a more integrated sensor ecosystem. Combined with the P-8A Poseidon Increment 3 upgrade, which adds new anti-submarine sensors and network links, and the emerging MQ-28A Ghost Bat Loyal Wingman drone, the RAAF is building a tiered reconnaissance structure. This network will feed data into the Air and Space Operations Command and Control System, currently under development with a budget of 133 million Australian dollars. When paired with future AUKUS-class nuclear-powered submarines, these systems could allow Australia to maintain continuous surveillance and targeting capability across an area that spans nearly one-tenth of the Earth's surface. Yet the essence of deterrence lies not only in hardware, but in perception. 
the MC55A's greatest contribution may be psychological. It tells potential adversaries that their actions will be seen, recorded, and analyzed in real time. For allies, it demonstrates Australia's willingness to shoulder a larger share of the collective intelligence burden. For the Australian public, it represents an investment in transparency and security at a time when the Indo-Pacific is becoming the most contested region on the planet. The aircraft's quiet hum above the clouds may never be heard by most citizens, but its data will shape national strategy for decades. In the end, the Peregrine's significance goes beyond its sensors or range. It embodies the idea that information is the first weapon and that the power to observe can be as decisive as the power to strike. Australia's new electronic eyes will not eliminate uncertainty, but they will narrow the margins in which surprise and coercion thrive. In an era defined by gray zone tactics and rapid technological competition, that may be the difference between vulnerability and resilience. The Indo-Pacific has entered an age where seeing is deterring, and for Australia, the MC55A marks the moment when vision itself became a form of power. <laughs>